It's not that I'm fast. It's not that I'm strong. It's not because I come from a family of fighters. It's because I'm the smartest up here. There's no fighter out there that can match me up here. What's up? It's your boy Remus, and welcome to the Champ Set Podcast, the podcast for champions. What's up? It's your boy Remus, and welcome back to the Champ Set Podcast, the podcast for champions, because we're talking about championship business. And, you know, today we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, thoughts on the aftermath of the fight between Billy Joe Saunders and Canelo. Of course, Canelo won the fight in, um, to me, impressive fashion. You know, I know some people said they had Saunders ahead and stuff like that, but we're going to get into that. But mainly we're going to cover this. Did Billy Joe Saunders quit? And two, uh, we're going to speak about the delusion of fighters in the face of loss that tells us something about a fighter's mindset, because I think it could help you. Because, you know, I'm going to read out Billy Joe Saunders' uh, statement after the fight, right? And um, we all know what happened in that in that fight. Um, but I'm, a, I'm about to go into it. He said, thanks everyone for the messages, broken eye socket, broken cheekbo cheekbone in three places. Operation yesterday all went well. You win some, you lose some. I didn't feel out of my league, but got caught with a good shot and I couldn't see and Ben uh, got the corner to pu pull it. So basically, I found that interesting because, because of the fact that he said, I got caught with a good shot. And to me, I could be wrong, but you let me know what you think, but it seemed like to me, he said it in a way where it's like, it was a lucky shot out of the blue. And I've also seen people say, oh, well, you know, I've had him two rounds ahead and all of that stuff. First of all, I don't think you can score the fight like that because you're not scoring it how the judges are. You're not scoring it in con uh, proper context. You're not considering that this is in Texas. This is a pro Canelo crowd. He is the champion, even though, you know, you get what I'm saying? He is the champion, right? Uh, he's the big draw. Um, they're not going to just, get, if it's a 50-50 round or even a 60-40 round in favor of Billy Joe Saunders, they're still going to give it to Canelo. So you kind of have to score it like that. So I had, I had Canelo, uh, I think I had it five rounds for Canelo, three rounds Billy Joe Saunders. Um, which is much more accurate when you consider what the judges would be scoring it like. Now, the next point, which is the fact that from the very first round, Billy Joe Saunders in his southpaw style was leaning forward, right? And he's doing that in a way where his whole body is vulnerable. So he was leaning forward after he threw a punch and, and Canelo was attempting to catch, catch him with the uppercut or just a counter like hook from a low angle i said from the very first round as i'm sure many of you did you know i said from the very first round it's not gonna it's not gonna last and that punch is going to catch him because he keeps doing it by the second round i was like he, you can't keep doing this you actually can't keep doing this so when he says it's a good shot it's not just a good shot it actually was timed it actually was playing on a vulnerability that could have been fixed, but of course, when you're a fighter and you're um, doing a set, you're comfortable in a pattern, you just keep doing it. But the point is, it wasn't just a lucky shot. It wasn't just um, a shot out of nowhere. It was a shot that Canelo was throwing and getting more accurate as time was going on. Now, this uh, tells you something that you need to work on as a fighter. First of all, you need to get good at uh, reading patterns of the other guy. If the other guy is doing the same thing, prepare a counter for it. If you start doing this from now, you'll, be, you'll get good in five years time, 10 years time, because you'll keep doing it. Also, you need to be wary of the fact that when you do the same thing, that you need to change. And this is one of the reasons why I, as time goes by, and I'm watching these fights, and the, th these are two elite level competitors. But I watch it and I'm like, whoa. Fighters like Floyd Mayweather were really great because I'm seeing now that Floyd would have adjusted. And I'm not saying it like it's easy, of course, but I'm saying to you, if you can be that fighter 
who works on it from now, you won't um, sow the seed of your demise in the first round of your future fight when you fight for a title in five, six, seven years time or whatever. But um, yeah, at first I said it points to the delusion of fighters because it's almost like fighters don't want to accept <laughs> when it was, wasn't was just a good shot, when it wasn't just a fluke. Um, because they say things like this, even like we see with Wilder, he, 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 I haven't looked into the allegations with Wilder against Fury in terms of the tampered gloves and all of that. I haven't really looked into that too much. So you might know more than me on that. However, I still think it does point to the fact that Wilder just can't accept defeat because it's like, no, 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 no. This guy, he's not better than me. There has to be another reason why he defeated me. It can't just be that he's better than me. He's not. And it's a good thing because it actually is the, it points to your sense of belief and it points to the fact that it, I mean, if you do believe a lot, you're going to do the things required to get what you believe you are worth. So it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing because it kind of stops you from looking at reality. Um, perhaps one of the, the bad things about saying it was just a good shot means that you're not going to work on it because you just think it was a good shot and he kind of got lucky. I'm not saying that's for sure how he's saying it, but it sounded like that to me. Um, yeah, if you just think it's a good shot, you're less likely to work on it or think you have, you're, you're, you're less likely to think that you have points for uh, improvement. Now we go on to the other point, which is did Billy Joe Saunders quit? Um, at first when I watched the fight, and I want to know what you think, so comment down below. Uh, I personally thought that when when that shot landed and it was instantly bruised, I thought it was um I thought it was just a swelling that was coming. I I, I thought it was more one of those ones where, where it's to do with the tissue rather than the actual bone. Uh, but I did see when he got back to the corner, I I could see that he didn't want to carry on. And I was like, this he doesn't seem like he wants to carry on. This fight is not gonna go more than two rounds. You know, he's gonna he's gonna either get TKO'd or pull out in the corner the next round. So when the fight did get stopped, I wasn't too surprised. But I also was kind of like, yo, you you was getting on to Daniel Dubois about him taking a knee and stuff. You was getting on uh getting on to him saying, you know, get carried out the ring. Why are you not carrying on ca carrying on? Um, because I thought again it was just to do more of the tissue, the muscle, that sort of thing. But then when I found out it was actually a, a big fracture to the orbital bone, literally a broken bone, really. And then when you see the uh, when you see the pictures after, you see, see like how here I got I got the cheek. You can see it's a bit circle, kind of full, circular, is round. But the other side was literally like flat. It was it was flat. So that means his face literally got pushed in. So then I think about that and I'm like, him going out against the pound for pound best um, with that sort of injury is is a bit crazy. I think in the fight 50s, they probably would have carried on. I would say that. But can I say he quit if if that's the type of injury we're dealing with? And he did finish the round. He did quit. But at the same time, it's kind of justified. Um, and people say, no, 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 his, his corner pulled it. But you have to consider this. Trainers and coaches, coaches know that they have to take the blame for stopping a fight. A fighter can't really just stop the fight himself because we're going to call him a quitter. So trainers know this. So he's reading the body language and the tone of Billy Joe Saunders. And he's saying, well... He probably wants to quit, but he knows he can't say but because he'll get called a quitter because, you know, the fighter's ego and stuff like that. So I think through non-verbal communication, Billy Joe Saunders was telling Mark Tibbs that I am finished, I, I'm, I'm done, um, I do quit. But it's just like, I, I, I don't call him a quitter, you know, because that's not... I, I think he fought through the end of the round. I fought... Um, it's like a, a massive injury. You almost can't expect him to just, like he was gonna get brutally finished. The only reason why you could say you expect him to do that is because of his own words. But I, I don't take away any credit from him because 
to get that sort of an injury and then fight Canelo and then you don't even have the power punching power punching um, style or even the, the strength to stop Canelo and you know that because he never hurt Canelo throughout that fight. And that's why I say to the people that say you had Billy Joe Saunders ahead or, or whatever like that, no, 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 no. Because you have to consider, even if he outscored Canelo at some points, the direction and momentum of the fight was never with Billy Joe Saunders. He was, it, it, it was almost like he was a bit tentative and urgent when he landed his punches and Canelo was more relaxed. So even if there was rounds where he outscored Canelo, the direction was never with, um, it was never against Canelo. Canelo looked like he was just growing into the fight more and more, becoming more relaxed. Um, it felt under his control. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't think at any point the momentum was really with Billy Joe Saunders. Not really, not generally. So that's my thoughts on the fight. I don't call him a quitter. Um, I think the truth is he might want to go on for us, but then, you know, he, he risks a very serious injury, you know, and even an injury like that is going to, it has to continue on into his future fights. It's going to be, uh, what do you call it? Like chronic, oh, what's the word? Chronic, a chronic injury, because I'm sure if he gets hit in that area over and over by a power puncher in the future, I'm sure it will be uh, more fragile. I'm sure it has to be. But those are my thoughts on the fight. I also want to know what you think, you know, um, so comment down below and let Remus know. And by the way, uh, with the Champs at Podcast, we're probably going to be wrapping this up in about 15 more episodes. So appreciate it while it's here. Um, for the people who do like this style or do like these type of topics in terms of motivation, uh, mindset and all of that stuff, I'm going to be, I'm starting a new channel. You don't really, I'm not saying that you have to subscribe to it, but I'm just letting the people know who do like that stuff it might be something you're interested in. So, you know, I'll talk about that in a future video or, or leave a link in the description, but I'm gonna be linking, you know, mindset, um, you know, self power and control, discipline, you know, just powerful concepts that make a man. I'm gonna be linking that to general topics in life to do with, you know, things that, everyday things that men go through. So. Uh, that might be something you're interested in. But I'm not telling you to subscribe. I'm just letting you know. But I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.